Titan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the NALCS promotional qualifiers. Today, game number two of Falafel Gaming up against Project Challenger coming your way via Riot Teaser Stream. And bam, there you go, in all of its beautiful glory. Now, right now, Falafel down 0 1. This is their game to make something happen, Mr. Bird. Yeah, Falafel had a little bit of an entry strategy using the Zingy in the jungle, um, doing some interesting stuff with a. Uh, Interesting champion, that's all I wanted to say from there. But overall, it was a interesting take onto the junglage and unfortunately not a very interesting result with the loss coming out to their hands. Can they come back in this one? As the question Falafel Gaming is gonna have to question or answer for themselves. On the other hand, Project Challenger, they just need one more to win now, and they're in the round of eight, but you can almost taste that relegation tournament for that um, just reprise, re-upping, and that's some promotional, well, promotion to the LCS. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> the prize for this tournament? Another tournament. Yeah! That's exactly <laughs> what I like to hear. <laughs> Lots more gasting down the line, although I think that the LCS commentators will probably take it over from that point. But either way, these silent streams are a great use of time for us because us as a community get to do our own practice, our own streams, because, you know, one day those LCS guys are going to retire. And we're going to need new players, new commentators, new fresh blood. That's why we love these silent streams. So once again, thank you, Riot Tiza, for somehow he's able to message himself in that corner. So strange things abound. All right, <laughs> who do you got for the bands, Mr. Bird? Uh, we do have the Nidalee and Move Rumble for Project Challenger, while on the other hand, Falafel Gaming, and Anthra Rise, Nostas, and Volley Bear yet again. Not surprising on the bands of Zingy getting banned out again from the Moomoo of the Rumble being banned out. I'm thinking Cybolic plays a pretty good rumble and as, as well in Italy, so that's unfortunate. And yeah, we'll see something of a Nomer coming in too really soon. Because we have some good picks coming out from both sides right now. I think the only different band we have here is Shen. We don't have a Shen band this time. I'm fairly sure it was Shen. But either way, yeah, Rise seems to be more of a target band because, oh my god, did EV card absolutely dominate with game number one. He ended up 15-4 and four by the end of things. Uh, so you know that that rise was rocking six items and doing the damages. In terms of the picks, yeah, blue team, once again, Project Challenger uh, is going to be rocking that. Caitlyn with very likely Lulu in the bot. That leaves us, again, I want to say Jace mid and Elise top of the Nocturne jungle. Um, That's a possibility. I'm not surprised if that would actually happen. Although, I don't know, Jace top and uh, at least mid wouldn't be a bad idea especially with what Valkyrie could be picking up at the end and they could go for that cannon and uh, cannon versus Elise could go in the same little way of well EV card just rushing over and killing down onto that mid lane and it is going to be Valkyrie locking in the cannon as well so uh, Cybalix actually going to be playing that one and we're going to see what will happen in just a little bit of go now, the last time I checked, the only change between canon, really, between Season 2 and Season 3, is that his ultimate became free. Yes. Is there anything else that, of, of note for that? Uh, the only reason why we don't see too many players play canon anymore is the W is nerfed a little bit. I think it's either the bonus magic damage, that's uh, just base damage, is down a little bit, and also... Uh, it, I think that's about it because a lot of people used to play canon. I think we still see it with Giants, with... Uh, can't remember his name, but AD carry for Giants so loves playing that AD cannon, and it's a really good champion, especially over that bottom lane. But we're probably going to see a more standard mid or top lane, although still probably starting up AD 40 pot is still not out of the question. I'm not surprised, or I won't be surprised to see him probably rest his onions and do the whole season two kind of build of just trying to win, like how Morgana does, flashing into the team and stunning down everybody. All right, so spectator delay is going to be kicking in. We're three minutes beyond the three minutes, so a total of six minutes delay. Don't worry about any kind of ghosting here, ladies and gentlemen, especially if you're on YouTube. The games are already done and dusted. But <laughs> with Jarvan there, uh, very likely that, you know, jungle, he does have that smite. I want to say Valkyrie, though, will be that. Uh, I want to say Jogath is going to go top, but Cybolic was their top laner last round. So it's very likely then if Cybolic is not going to be changing lanes, he will be a top cannon. Or bottom cannon, technically, if well, they go yeah, for the yeah. TV one strategy. Yeah, yeah, Find the solo lane cannon. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, mid, mid, mid trigger is gonna be against probably EV cards. Jace. I don't know about that matchup. That doesn't sound too well for the trigger. But then again, trigger can still resustain up with the carnivore passive, 
and he'll be able to farm out kind of successfully, but I don't know if that's actually the smartest idea to face against a chase. Well, uh, you know, a lot of sustain can definitely come from Cho'Gath with his passive. As long as he can farm it up, should be okay. And there we go. Got the intro music coming out. And about you know, a little under two minutes until we get this going. And we do have that teleport on top of Cybolic. Do we actually have a teleport? No. No nope. teleport from Challenger this round. So last round we did see a teleport Cho'Gath. I don't really think he was very satisfied with his use of it. So he probably, you know just ditched it out of that because it is elite now this time cloud x high and cloud x high once again like some really solid last hit mechanics by the 40 minute mark 45 minute mark he was rocking already 400 creeps on top of things so between him and cybolic i'm curious to see who's actually going to win out that lane the battle of the ap's this round but yes i do want to say the box going to be top with the cho'gath mid yes he might have some trouble but as long as he can last hit you know with potions he should be able to do well and at the same time he's going to have the support of a jarvin to come in on top of jace for those jump ganks yeah, Zinke playing a, a more of conventional pick in the jungle, going to be picking up the J4. It's not going to be a surprise or anything like that with the, oh, what it was, the Karthus jungle that was happening. Yep. You might want to see game one off, if, if anything, as well. Because that was a really fun one for the team Falafel Gaming. I think they're going to be a little bit more serious, and they're going to try to pick, take it to the Project Challenger team, especially with comp. Although, a wild Mimo putting out that Nocturne, he did a really good job before with the J4. Maybe he has that counter part, maybe he has that counter in the mind of a Zingy with that Nocturne. And Nocturne is a really, really strong pick. I really like the Nocturne, well, as a Season 1, Season 2 kind of feel. But in Season 3, I feel like he clear as fast as many of the other junglers. And his ganks are really, really limitless, especially with Paranoia into the Amnesia Genkin. Yeah, especially since we had those jungle changes go down where we kind of made those weaker minions just that much weaker. <laughs> so yeah, his passive when it does pop off definitely has some fun times associated with the game number two coming your way here guys. Falafel Gaming down 0-1 up against Challenger. It is their game to prove themselves as they do want to be moving on in this tournament. After this we will have another set of best of three. Not entirely too sure who it's going to be quite yet but FX Open has been mentioned several times. A lot of people seem to be very interested in that game going forward and Riot Tisa please Where's my title? There it is. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go with the switch off. And again, guys, this is me, Falafel Gaming, on the red side, the Project Challenger on the blue side. I'm liking both teams. I like them in the comps. Hopefully, we'll see some level 1 engagements. I really haven't seen that ever so slightly from any of the games that we casted uh, today, especially on the EU side as well. Although there's a lot on the line, I did talk about that before, and it's probably not going to happen. I still want to see someone just invade in, take 5 for 0 on the ace, and just rock the day off of that. And that'd be really cool to see, actually, from Project Challenger to kind of show the upstarts, the people who are technically ranked 1 in the 5v5 tournament ladder. Alright, so Tiza, or whoever is in charge of Tiza's stream going to be sorting out the scoreboard GG right there get rid of that choke out yeah awesome great uh looks like a little bit of lag coming in because the timer actually hasn't started but already as you can see both supports going to be rocking for their utility specs you can see the observer ward you can see the biscuit the total biscuit and something happened yeah, I think that's come, kind of coming in with the observer pause and such or not the observer pause but the observer delay I guess there was a pause right straight from the beginning, and that's why we didn't actually see the timer move at all. Hopefully we'll get over this uh, delay, and hopefully we'll get in soon. Yeah, and there we go. It's going to resume right about now. And in terms of the potions and all the pots coming out, there's the fortitude on top of Kennen, so we'll be Kennen mid with that fortitude. Not entirely too sure. I, as I said, I really would have liked to see his masteries and runes, but need to actually now uh, go on top of Cybolic. But Cybolic, did I say mid? Totally meant top. Damn you, Tiza. Why'd you put a mid? <laughs> uh, but yeah, he'll probably switch over the mid or go to the top. It doesn't really matter. Cybolic will be doing a pretty good job as a solo laner. And the Falafels are going to defend. We're going to see Project Challenger defend out as well. Really quickly before everything starts up, are you like at 41 seconds, 42? 44, 45, 46. Okay, so it's, it's, it's good. It's good to actually keep it over on 720p. Okay, good. 
Yeah, I refreshed my stream as well during the delay, so we should be within two seconds of each other. Hopefully it stays <laughs> that way, but no guarantees. And yeah, as you said, everything's going to get started going. Don't really see any kind of invades forming up, just kind of split between top and bottom. Yeah, and it's unfortunate from Pressure Challenger, they could have actually made a really big play and actually set the tone for, well, unfortunately for Fluffle Gaming on that side, who are on the back foot of this one. They're down 1-0. They could keep it going, but again, Pressure Challenger, they're not really taking any risks, and they're making sure that they can, they can defend out really well. On the other hand, Fluffle Gaming does have that advanced ward over by the uh, race of Pressure Challenger's side, so... That could be a dangerous tell and time for the J4 to kind of gank in, maybe over bottom, maybe over top lane. So, no invades going on, but once again, we are seeing more and more people take the start where everybody's doing something in the jungle. Everyone except Cybolic, I guess, and Sono. But you can see the help going down for the blues. You can see these guys are going to be taking out the golems. We've got the wolves being taken out now as well by Misfortune and Cho'Gath you know, starting in and around uh, his race. So. You know, a lot of things going down. It's, it just really helps boost up your experience before you do come back to lane. Cloud X High is going to be a little late to his lane. Speaking of that, did kind of stay really long to help out for that the kill from uh, Mimo, but it was smiteless, and that's going to be a big advantage coming down to that red. Doesn't have to wait for it to come back up. A Zingy also with the smiteless as well. So the junglers are going to be picking up their buffs, and no lane switches quite this time. It, it will be top lane against top lane. Yeah, that's unfortunate because I think, again, they could have actually it challenged and advanced on that little notion that 2v1 would be pretty key to shut down Ken and 2v1 would be pretty key to shut down Elise. But then again, I think everything standard is actually going to be a pretty much an easier game for the team of Project Challenger and probably a better game for Falafel Gaming, who are on the, again, backside of this one. They kind of need to calm it down just a little bit, get everything ready, especially down 1-0. So already you can see some big pressure coming into this bot lane. 10 to 3 for the creeps, and now the tower is just going to start eating them up. But the tower damage is also starting to you get there here from Aces. Nice shield from Rule 18. We really kind of predicted that we're going to get that area thrown out by Baby Zeus. And this is actually the second time Baby Zeus with that Sona. But oh, mid lane EV card trying to go for that first blood on top of Valkyrie. You got Ignite going down, and a very tiny Cho'Gath is going to be dropping for first blood. As Zingy, however, will be able to pick up the second, and he has to flash on out of that one before Jays can actually get that combo for with cooldowns up. So once again, first blood and second going down in the mid lane. And again, a lot of action coming in from both members of the crew and unfortunately both uh, junglers is going to be giving out their buffs to their mid laners technically. Oh, actually not both junglers, but the... Uh, I mean, EV card's going to have an extra little bit of good damage and unfortunately for your Valkyrie, he's going to keep a lot of damage onto himself, so hopefully he'll be able to sustain, farm up, go right through, and come back into this a little bit strongly. 10 to 18 on the CS score right now, over in that mid lane. And Valkyrie, I mean, he's going to be just down on a little bit of gold, but he'll be fine to keep up with this one. Yeah, because we did get the one for one, they do have to take their time to get back to that mid lane. Waka Waka able to land some damage here on top of Aces. Now we did look at Cybolic a little bit earlier on a camera pan. He did have 23 ability power, so it is going to be more of an AP cannon. He's just going to use that lightning rush, try to get out of the danger. Mimo, however, not going to be able to grab anything there. No fear tether or anything this round. But that lightning rush is down and he hasn't left top, so that could become very messy for him very quickly. I mean, he does have flash, he does have teleport if he really needs to. And if you have to use flash, he'll probably just go back, buy some pots, and then go right again with that teleport. I'm not surprised with the start again, 42 pot for that cannon. I mean, that's pretty much key into sustaining through right now. And kind of why Riot said, yeah, we're going to kind of make sure that you guys can just buy that. Now going to be at 350 in the next, uh, I think, patch or the second patch that's coming out. It's going to be really disheartening for everybody who starts off with a 4-2 uh, bot. Yeah, they'll complain about it for a while, but just like Season 3 changes, they will become accepted over time. And, you know, we didn't even see the 4-2 pots become real big until Season 3 anyway. So the good riot can give it, and the good riot can take it away. Yep, and that is just how it's going to go. And everyone will adjust, no problem. But as an AD carry player alone, I, I don't mind it because it still doesn't really affect me in on my build wise. So very, very cool to see that coming down on Bruisers because again, Bruisers just getting a little bit of advantage just from one red pot. Just very, very key into a lot of things. But right now, we're just chilling out right now. 
Like you do have a 400 gold difference coming up from Project Challenger. And Falafel Gaming, they're going to try to go for this gank. Possibly at bot. Yeah, could be a possible here. And yeah, going right over that wall, really nice times there for Azingi. They're able to land a lot of damage here on top of Rule 18, but unfortunately not going to be grabbing anything on top of Aces. Did use that net and Waka Waka. Not exactly in the best of mindsets for trying to follow that. Cybolic going to be taking some damage. Cloud High. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of release despite the repeated nerfs that came down to her. Remember the League of Warmog days? <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, especially now with the Venomous Bite a little bit lower on base damage and AP, uh, Nar Nerotox in the same way, it's still a little bit hurtful during her lane phase, but her mid game, her late game is just too, too strong. A lot of champions with mobility have been picked up uh, a lot more than champions that don't have mobility anymore, Brand, Annie, such like that. And that's just the changes that we see from both teams, or from, from the meta. Yeah, so we had the teleport come out from Cybolic. He's going to be more in that bot uh, bottom lane. Valkyrie getting beat up there in the mid as well. Cybolic forcing out the barrier here from Aces. It's not going to be enough for her to get out of that one. Did use the Fortitude? No, he didn't use the Fortitude pot, but the auto attack at the end, able to pick up the kill. And I think Lulu actually got out of the dodge. Yeah, she actually made it all the way home. And Valkyrie, despite this pressure, did not drop. Now it's going to be Azinga coming in, looking for the card on top of EV card. And that's going to be the Fear Tether on top of the Things, and I don't think Valkyrie's going to be able to pick that one up. Yeah, a little bit of return damage from Jace through that hyper acceleration gate. And when everything is done, two ones for the scoreboard. And again, gold just, again, very slightly even. Yeah, I mean, the CS score is pretty much the reason why they kind of tied up from that. Say, Balak using that teleport, it was to catch that Lulu. Unfortunately, Lulu and played it off really smart, got out of the way, went through River, and just got safe. But the only problem is the counterpart, Aces, was well, in trouble, got caught by everybody, and the 9 Aces XP, some farm as well, is going to hurt that bottom lane just a little bit more as they try to take over this blue buff top <laughs> and finally gets it with that barrel scream. Yeah, Zingy needed one more <laughs> auto attack, but hey, if it hit the Mad Dreads, would have been bad times for Valkyrie. Now, you said you know a little bit of difference between Valkyrie be running that Shoga up against the Jace mid, but so far, you know, they've been going neck and neck. We do have an assist on Shoga to the kill on Jace, but Jace opening up with that Tear of the Goddess. Really pretty typical stuff, but Shogath still only has himself the Dorans, and he's been keeping up with creeps fairly well. Yeah, Shogath has been doing a really good job just keeping up whenever he can, in that building in the Seeker's Arm Guard on top of the Dorans Ring, so he's going to sustain through mana, especially with the uh, kill per each time with the Dorans Ring, and on top of that, the Carnivore Passive, which is a very, very good tool to give him back that mana regen, the health regen as well. And then also with the ward advantage, I mean, he has a pink ward and a sight ward as well. To deny vision, actually add on vision, it's going to be pretty key. The biggest thing about having Shogath mid, it's to really counter against assassins really, but also to control dragon a lot more. Once you have a Shogath with beast and all that stuff, we were talking about that last game, into uh, a team, it'll really deny a lot of that well, control yet again for the opposing team. So. Really cool to see that happen for the team of Falafel Gaming. They're using their comp in a little bit of a good advantage, and hopefully they can take it away from this one. Blaze253 in chat actually doing some runes and mastery sleuthing. Did find out that actually all the runes here for Challenger. So you can see them there in the chat. Good work there, Blaze. 6% bonus lifesteal coming out for the ADC for Aces. Uh, we've actually been seeing that more and more as a rune set for ADCs coming out because especially if they just start off with that Doran's Blade, they can mm -hmm. start accumulating their 6% bonus from there. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Some people have been using Mastery Zex to get that 6%. Um, while having like 4% lifesteal and then going 19 -0 -11, that's another way that people have done with the Masteries on top of the uh, spell them that you can get from that. It's really interesting to see. But having that 2109 working the play for Project Challenger, Ace is going to have a really good time, and usually that's what you see with the Doran's Blade with a uh, Vikings Green over by it. Yeah, where's that paranoia? It's going to be bottom. A wild Mimo who does have 25% attack speed from his rune, not going to be able to grab a kill. In fact, it's not going to look good for Cybolic, this top, so maybe getting a little bit distracted there with the bottom and the top two on one actually bringing home the bacon in that round. But two for two for the score, 13 to 12,000 gold. Really still anybody's game at this point, but because of the pressure bottom, it looks like that, yeah, Dragon's going to be going the way of Falafel Gaming. Yeah, with so many people over there at bottom, that makes it really easy for Falafel Gaming to pick that one up. But on the other hand, Project uh, Challenger is going to be able to pick up the top turret, 
and they're going to be able to try to push up a little bit more. Cybolic just caught out in a little bit of misposition, unfortunately not going to have any other offensive skills. Did disable that flash and it's going to have teleport up in just a little bit, so that's really key for the next fight engagement that's going to be coming in within probably the next 3-5 to five minutes. And hopefully by then, um, Seeker's Iron Guard on top of that, the uh, Nisli Lord of Raj into a uh, Zion's Iron Glass will be ready to um, belt up. Because if they fight before that actually happens, uh, Falafel Gaming is not going to have as much damage. They have a good amount of damage, but as much damage as what Project, as what Project Challenger will have at that mid-game go. Yeah, with the double Seekers now on Falafa, I mean, if you look at it, Nocturne, physical damage, EV card, and Aces, physical damage, I would not be surprised to see those Zonias either come out, because you're going to need a lot of armor. I'm hoping that this round we do see an Aegis come out from the jungler. Uh, we still have that Magic's and the Boots 5 now from Azingi, but last round, I mean, I really do think that they really could have benefited from an Aegis or a Runic on the team, because not only did Challenger have the Runic, but they had double Locket by the end of it. And I, I just think it was just too much protection for them to kind of crack through. So we're going to have to see if they do change that up this round. Long range poke still going down from this Sona. So, you know, despite base health nerfs, she still has quite a bit of extra range. And I think they know a Zingy's actually there, so they're not going to be pushing this up. Yeah, especially with the pink board in the fr uh, frontal bush, it's not going to be a problem for Project Challenger to try to bait out Zingy over there. And Zingy already knows that. He's going to go actually try to fake a bait back. And if he actually goes back all the way, he would actually, unfortunately, have challenge or Challenger a little bit of advantage with a lot of Mimo just off on the side over there. Lots of damage on this bottom turret. So, you know, last time we did see the turret get traded out for the Dragon. Permanent versus that temporary uh, global objective. So the gold was pretty much the same. But we have been f pushing in fairly consistently in this bottom lane. Waka, waka, waka. And baby Zeus is Zingy now in there as well. But once again, Ward does spot him out. That will be a defeated gank. But we also have Nocturne maybe going to be coming around here as well. Now they do know that Jarvan just headed back. And there's no wards down there. We might see a Paranoia come in. But it did just come back off of cooldown. Yeah, so that's going to be really key in the next fight. Dragon, again, um, providing chat 1640 is the next dragon that's going to be coming up. So they're going to have a little bit of time before this all happens. I'm pretty sure Nocturne doesn't like camping, but maybe if he gets a kill, he's going to get the kill. Yeah, there's the paranoia looking for that fear tether. We also had the wild growth. Really nice timing from Rule 18 and Baby Zeus standing no chance from that gank. Uh, but I do hear a ping. Kennen's actually really low up top, still having troubles going toe-to-toe -to -toe with that Elise. And yeah, I guess that'll be that. 3-2 to two now for the score as Project Challenger is taking a little bit of an early game lead here in Game 2. And that's the problem, well, I'm going to say something about the cannon first and then go back to bot. Uh, that's the problem with uh, picking uh, cannon over in that top lane against Elise. Elise is going to keep on peltering damage. Right now, she didn't actually build in the way that usually you would want to go, haunting guys into the Stork shoes and then whatever else you want to build off of that. Um, Elise is doing enough damage with Kage's pick and the hunting guys. It doesn't actually need more penetration because Kennen had to go Secret's Arm Guard first because of the threat of going into the next team fight with a Zion's Hourglass. So it's really key where Kennen is right now to play it a little bit safe, farm up as much as he can, and keep going when he can as well damage output. Although doing a better job in CSing right now, it's just how Elise's early game is. It's pretty hard to CS with her. Yeah, we actually have really even scores across the across the board. Misfortune, really the the biggest upset there, 114 to 101. But now that I'm looking at it, Cho'Gath once again, Valkyrie very solid on his last hitting skills, 123, leading the game at this point. And again, like every time he last hits, he gets that health, gets that mando back. So Jay so far hasn't really been too much of a problem ever since that initial first blood on him. It's whenever we do get things like Nocturne into the fray. And Nocturne with that paranoia, a long range initiate. He doesn't even have to be inside vision range to kind of jump on top of you. And with that paranoia, of course, you will disorient your enemy team. Got to have a lot of communication to figure out where that's going to be landing. And so far they have been using it fairly well. Two of the three kills have been as a result from the paranoia on Nocturne. Yeah, I mean, Paranoia slash Nocturne has been doing a really good job. A wild Mimo is doing a very, very strong, strong um, ganking potential job with the MA show. But on top of that, he's been providing pressure in the jungle, been pro providing pressure onto the lanes, and 62-38 really sounds the score for that for the CS score. 
Unfortunately for Zingy, he's just falling a little bit behind each and every time. Although having that one kill it will keep him up in the gold, and especially with that Philosopher's Stone, he'll be fine. But it's kind of reminiscent of Season 2 right there, having Philosopher's Stone on the jungler. I haven't really seen that so many times anymore, but overall it's still anyone's game for both teams. I wonder if he's actually going to go for Shirelius with that. It, you do have very limited options with a Philo Stone. That's a really good idea, I actually go right into Shirelius and help with the team engage in better. Especially with Kennen, I mean, Lightning Rush, you can get in a little bit faster, but you don't really want to use Lightning Rush to start up a fight. You want to use it to try to use it as a last ender or a disengage. Sona, I mean, yeah, you can get that uh, speed up from her E, but you don't really want to use that during a fight. You want to have him of Valor up to give that more damage output burst. So overall, a very smart little take if Jarvan can get there pretty much unscathed. The problem is 38 CS compared to 62 CS, that's pretty good. And yeah, we have the IPL Summer Provisional Qualifier right there. April 1st. I don't know about you, but that was a little bit ago. <laughs> Might be know. April Fool's joke, maybe. Oh, oh, that, that's a low blow, Mr. Bird. <laughs> uh, I don't know exactly know why he brought that screen up, but either way, gameplay will resume here on the right He's of the stream. Project Challenger up against Falafel game number two. And, you know, again, 15 minutes in, five kills. We've been seeing more and more longer games with less and less kills. It's all about the tactics right now. And speaking of tactics, as Zingy goes in, but Cloud High is going to be there for that response, forcing out the flash. That's all right. She's going to jump down. The Cataclysm comes out as the Zingy really wants to try to make sure that she does go down. We had Cybolic come in with that ultimate as well as the teleport, and it's not going to be enough for him. He does drop, and with that bullet time, it's not going to be an even exchange as we did end up two for one, and that's going to be the teleport teleport from top as well. Yeah, Cybolic didn't have anything else to respond at the, at the end. He did get exhausted down a little too early, roll a team, pulling the gun off on that one. And that's unfortunate because Cod High just kept on dying from there. I think he got trapped on the trap and actually tried to do some other good things, but could not finish up on the kill otherwise. But other than that, it was a really good job from Project Challenger. Just to get the kills whenever they can and pretty much just secure what they did. Really great room by Cloud X High and really great job by the team Project Challenger taking that two for one. Yeah, five to three. They're still staying ahead in terms of the gold by about a thousand. Again, anybody's game really, but it's harder and harder to find bigger and bigger gold discrepancies this early game. Like when the teams are this even, you know, any kind of advantage is something that you do want to be taking home to the bank. Now in terms of everything you know, we did finally get the tier 2 boots out of Cannon. He does have Merc Preds. Not entirely too sure what we're going to see as a first real item from Jarvan. But the Seekers is going to be going into the Blasting Wand for Cho'Gath. And we do got the Bloodthirster already for Misfortune. Something that we haven't quite finished up for Caitlyn. Yeah, and Caitlyn, actually, you're probably going to go in the IE. If you are already going for Bloodthirster, you wouldn't show with the PT or the... Sorry, BF Sword and then just build into it. So I'm pretty sure Aces is going to go straight... <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm treating the IE and Rocket from there. Valkyrie gonna get engaged with over in that mid and take a lot of damage, but as Zingy come up on the side and try to support all Valkyrie. Yeah, he's able to push them off. Cloud high real low. Valkyrie will be able to get out of that one. He's just gonna beatbox his way back to town. EV card is just gonna be clearing up the jungle here. Uh, sorry, the lane and then into the jungle, but no, Valkyrie didn't actually head home, so I wonder if that was a little bit of a bait in case he was actually under vision because Dragon is here and it's not going to be there that much longer. Are we going to get the steal? No, red team with the smite at the end. Really good timing there out of a zingy and a ward pickup there for baby Zeus on top of things. And one thing to note again, Blaze253 in the chat bringing us the rune report for this game. Sona is rocking both armor and magic penetration. Uh, the hybrid pen. I think I actually took that away from our uh, specials page. It's a really good and interesting topic to actually talk about. You get that uh, damage coming out from your Human Valor, the crescendo, no, the crescendo, the extra add-on hit at the end when you charge up, I think, two or three uh, cords really does a wonder, plus it's a magic damage shot, so having that extra penetration with that compared and tied on top of that the armor penetration just a lot of poke a lot of harass and actually we saw um i think like 30 seconds ago or a minute ago the trade between misfortune and caitlin caitlin could not stand up to that chance that opportunity and aces just took so much and you can see it right there it takes a little bit of poke each and every time aces cannot really 1v1 this misfortune right now 
Yeah, the double up does hit real hard if you're on the receiving end of it. Now, at the same time, I'm also looking to Miss Fortune. She has herself a pickaxe. I'm more inclined to say a Last Whisper is going to be next on the board for her. And if it is going to be Caitlyn with an Infinity Edge, you know, we're about to hit the 20 minute mark and. I don't see any other pieces to it. I mean, she's not out farming Misfortune, but she does have an extra assist to her name. So I'm curious to see if she actually will have the cash when she does head back to finish it up, or if she's just going to start lagging behind a little bit. Um, I mean, she stays in lane long enough. She is going to be lagging lane behind and behind in damage. Uh, Kai, uh, while Mimo are going to try to push up in this bottom turret, they're going to try to relieve some pressure while Card and Cybolic talk to each other at the mid. Now a little bit of poke going back. Ace is uh, once again going to be eating that double up, but the shield comes out from Lulu. Four of us now bottom lane from Falafel. Now dragons are already down, so we're going to see it in the next five minutes or so, but a lot of push in this bot lane. It's a big party down here. Cybolic's still top, does not have that teleport, so if they want to make something happen here, now's probably the time to do it, because it's going to be a four on three. You can see Mimo just positioning himself, looking for that paranoia, but it's not up yet, and Valkyrie somehow saved that mid tower for another day. Yeah, it's not long for this world, and it's bottom one as well. While Mimo picks off one, I don't think he wants to even engage in slash. He doesn't have paranoia to engage in, so he's going to back away from this. EV card's just going to clear up over at mid. Probably going to give a love tap in a little bit, but Falafel Gaming should be able to take out this mid turret, and I don't think Project Challenger wants to stay down here at bottom so much longer. Well, Falafel there on the red. I mean, Kennen, he wasn't there. Neither was Valkyrie, that so... You know, fortunately for them, the issue was not pressed. I think it was just a ma matter of timing for a lot of the ultimates there from Challengers, so they weren't able to grab a kill. But another church in the name, two for zero right now. Uh, but it was the dragon. I think both dragons have gone the way of Falafel. So that kind of evens out the global gold, really. And as you can see, you know, we're really not that different between the status of both items as well as cash. But Cloud X High is just going to try to capitalize here on top of Baby Zeus, and he will be able to take that kill. Really nice burst out of him and that from that cocoon. As Cybolic is finally able to take a tower. Now he's going to be mid. We got Jarvan and Cho'Gath up there as well. But Baby Zeus, man, needs to tank up a bit more. And that was kind of the thing with him last game. I mean, he played that sort of pretty okay. Only problem is he would get caught up one or two times and really deny himself levels, XP, and a lot of good things. Cybolic on the side right now could go ahead and engage onto the team, but again, doesn't have the Zion's Hourglass really that critical mass point in that mid-go. And we do see Cybolic going to try to run away from this one. Yeah, the tower goes down real quick. Paranoia. Cybolic does pop out that slicing Maelstrom at the end of all things. And Mimo does have to kind of make a run for it, but oh wow, did we actually get that escape? No, it's going to be the Jarvan ult for that misfortune, and oh my god, the damage coming out from the lava, able to take the better of that exchange, three for two, but they did lose the tower. I'm not really gonna count that really as too much of an objective because it was like one hit away anyways. It would have happened, but man, that damage at the end, the cataclysm into Misfortune's bullet time was just the lifesaver of Falafel right there. There was some arena time right there, just staying in there and being a little bit too long for this world was the whole team of Project Challenger. Unfortunately, Aces can actually come in to try to re initiate slash give some damage right back to that misfortune to try to get him off the uh, boat but yeah everyone was way too low from pressure challenger and at the end it was flop gaming taking that trade and they also are going to be taking the gold lead off as well yeah, so good game right there for that fight. Now, to, to me, what was really impressive was the Elise play from Cloud XI because we did get a lot of damage on top of Cybolic, but then for that death shot, she jumped in, got the kill, and then tried to repel back out. And it would have been successful if it wasn't for Jarvin kind of landing on top of the person she repelled to and then the bullet time. So I was like, man, if Cloud XI gets out of that one, I got to give him big props. I'm going to give it to him anyways because I really like that play. But yeah, this is why you take Miss and this is why you take Jarvan. That Cataclysm can really lead into some awesome situations where you get those kills, and now she does have that last whisper to do. Yeah, she's gonna be a dangerous, dangerous uh, person in the next go. Again, the AoE you were talking about, now we have Cybolic with that Zion's Hourglass finally, so they can lock people in. They have the Sona Ultimate with the Crescendo to lock people in. You have the uh, Rupture coming out from Cho'Gath, you have the Cataclysm coming out from J4. There's just so, so much synergy that comes in from Falafel Gaming. That if they have everybody caught in, in that little group yet again, it's going to be a dangerous time slash pr pretty much the game for Project Challenger. So they're going to have to worry about this next little run and hopefully they don't get caught out again for that time. 
Eight to six. Once again, gold staying really even. Another dragon's gonna be going up and going down real quick. Valkyrie has himself that feast, not gonna be using it, although I wanna say he's sitting at some pretty decent stacks. I don't know if he's at max though. But he has been feasting quite a bit, and oh wow! Is that a Baron attempt going down? Cybolic's gonna find it. Slicing Maelstrom coming in here. He's just trying to delay it. There's that Zonia. is just trying to buy time for the rest of the team to get here. And I think it's gonna be a successful maneuver. On top of things, Rule 18 gets hit, knocked up by that rupture and the silence. The bullet time is gonna be taken out. Aces. And now Zingy goes in with that Cataclysm. Nice crescendo. Somehow we got a flash through the middle of that. And Cloud X High is gonna drop as well. And Falafel coming out of that one. Three for zero. A dragon. And they stomped the Baron to boot. Using that bullet time into their advantage and making sure they can just capture everybody of the team of Frederick Challenger. Great job by Flopper Gaming, really, really owning up that fight. Probably gonna be able to take out this Baron to boot, but they're in the end. A wild Mimo could go and steal it down. Uh, he tried, he tried his hardest, and I'll give him props, but unfortunately, Smite too good. Azingi has not actually used Smite, so just DPS too good. It was good a on you, from too. <laughs> Yeah, was, yeah, definitely could have been that Mad Dreads prank. But hey, Amino, he gave it a shot. He died for it. That's okay. 10 to 8. The gold lead all of a sudden from going dead even to three kills, a Baron and a Dragon is now up 5k. Yep, and now Falafel Gaming getting back in their stride with that Baron buff. They're going to be able to push up probably over that mid tier 2 tournament, but they're going to try to push them up by and top. Try to re-regulate re those uh, tier 1 thirds and then just go on from there. There's some aggressive warding going in. Blue buff already warded out from Falafel Gaming for Project Challenger's side. And they're going to probably look into pushing in even more so in that mid lane. So I'm expecting Cybolic because he does have teleport to push over in the top lane. Try to get that turret down and team of Falafel Gaming just pressure mid really hard to get that tier 2 turret down. Yeah, tier two turrets. I mean, I think it was a, a Korean quote that this game's just about pushing turrets in the Nexus. I mean, that's how you win most of the time anyways. So, you know, we are going to see some more elevated importance on a lot of these pushes coming down the line. In terms of some of the items, we saw that Zonia's. We also got ourselves a Hextech on Kennen. Definitely a really older style strategy in this. But we also have that Cherilia's on Jarvan, so that Philoso Philosopher's Stone did pay itself off. And we also have ourselves that Locket. So, once again, no Aegis. You do see an Aegis on top of Mimo though with that giant spell still only the tier 1 boots but I think he's going for Merc Treads because he does have himself uh, that extra Negatron or not Negatron sorry but he has extra magic resist or mm -hmm. is that going to be a quick runic I'm curious uh, maybe runic maybe just going to be holding up to Merc Treads which is actually probably a smarter idea because there's four AOE also coming in this face I mean, the biggest thing, oh, right. he's going to go Runic instead, <laughs> but um, the biggest thing that's happening for Project Challenger, they can't get through his back. Like, Waka 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 is doing so much damage to the team with that one one ultimate alone. And on top of that, if they actually get to the back line, Waka 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 has that uh, the Blast Whisper instead of the Black Cleaver that you usually see, mm -hmm. has an immense amount of dueling potential with the Bloodthirster. So, 405, 221, Waka Waka Waka. Keep it going, sir, because it seems like you are carrying this team right now for Fall Off Gaming. Now we're 27 minutes in. Looking at the creeps, it's actually Jace leading the pack this time, just shy of 250. But again, Valkyrie really high up on his creeps, is sitting at 233, and just under that is going to be Misfortune at 223. Uh, not exactly the highest of counts this round from Cybolic, but compare that to Elise, 141. The difference there is going to be she has more kills, he has 60 more creeps. Any day of the week, I'll take the 60 creeps. Um, yeah, unless it's like six kills and maybe not because again, you can equate a uh, kill to about five to ten cre uh, creeps, so it works out the same way with a, well, big engagement right now. Yeah, Ace is just going to get trapped there in the back. There's the bullet time. Again, the Wombo combo looking real strong. Mimo, however, is going to throw out that paranoia. Doesn't matter. They can still see him. He's right in front of him. A Zingy going to be dropping real low. Has an Ignite going down. There's the Repel. Cloud X side not able. There we go. A little bit of a long range shot, but Cloud is able to take it home. Sona is now going to be there as well. That should be the kill for Cybolic. The flash from Waka to get away from Card. He's going to be okay for now, and that's going to be a two for one exchange plus the turret, and now lots of pressure is going to be applied here mid as we do have that numbers advantage for Falafel. 
Oh, they catch up in the aces. Get to the Pharaoh screen. He's gonna get the noms. No, it's just gonna be one shot in, one shot kill. Valkyrie gonna be able to finish that one up. Eevee card gonna provide some pressure, but they could take it down this inhibitor just because they don't have any AD pressure in the front line. Unfortunately, Jace was off on the side. Did not want to go face out for his life and pay for that one. Uh, we're gonna throw down that pink board. EV card is just gonna get some pot shots here on top of Valkyrie. Not entirely sure it's gonna be enough for, to DPS him down. We had the Shirelia's pop, and yeah, it's definitely not gonna be enough. But Baby Zeus in there as well, giving themselves the celerity when needed. Of course, he is a little low right now, so maybe no more celerities for him, but a heal instead. And when all things are done, I mean, 28 minutes, I think this is our earliest inhibitor we've seen. Uh, wow, that's kind of sad to say, <laughs> but I think that's true, you're right, because even the EU matches was pretty slow today. Um, Pressure Challenger now down a little bit in gold, down, well, a lot of in gold, sorry. Down in kills as well, it's been a really tough climb, Cloud X High, probably the star player of the team right now. 542-146 on the CS, I mean, technically the CS score 261 is really good, but 542 being involved in a lot of the kills that are happening for the team of Project Challenger, just not get into that backline. I mean, he can get up to the J4, he can catch up to Cho'Gath, but can't really catch up to the Misfortune. And on top of that, the disengage that they have for Waka Waka Wa. And on top of that, Waka's um, decision making, he flashed out right at the same time Jace was coming in from two of those guys. Just beautiful, beautiful uh, mechanics coming in from Falafel Gaming onto that AD carry coming out right now. Yeah, game number one, they had like a nice the really early game they had a really nice mid game but then we started seeing Azinga just kind of dying really too quickly in the end game team fights and that did really hurt them overall dragon was up dragon is down blue team's able to take it this round the paranoia comes in looking for the kill on top of Valkyrie. he has himself that zonias so he's gonna stay alive just that much longer ev card however in the midst of things he's gonna drop as mimo's looking for the kill on top of a zingy i'm not too sure he's gonna grab it nope a zingy <laughs> will by the skin of his teeth help and take down that kill now at least going to be on the run here from Waka Walk. Not entirely too sure who's going to win this one, but look at that burst from the spider. It's not going to be nearly enough with Cybolic there. And Walk, I mean, I was a little afraid right there for Waka Waka Walk, but he was able to take it home. And again, sure, you got the dragon. We got four kills, so sup. Yeah, that's just not a good trade. I think this is Project Challenge. We're going to set to say the V2 this game. Game number two, a lot of differences about Falafel Gaming's comp really made the difference in the game. I feel like game number one, they're trying to test the waters. Game number two, they said they're ready to go, and they re they went, they went and dived and killed everything that they could pillage. For game number three, there is a possibility in game number three. Project Challenger just needs to calm it down just a little bit and see what they can do about their comp, their picks. Just counteract this AOE just madness that's coming in, especially with Cybolic with the slice Maelstrom and this um, AOE ult that's coming in from Sona. Yeah, the, the nice AoE from the Crescendo, nice AoE from Slicing, the dunks, and then the bullet time on top of things. It, so far, has proven really hard to deal with here for Project Challenges. As you said, you know, we are looking at a very real possibility for game number three right now. And, you know, when you're up 1-0, sometimes you just don't play the best. And we have been seeing that time and time again. So it's always interesting to see games go to a game number three. Just definitely shows that the teams can, you know, make use of their tactics, make use of their experience in order to grab those advantages. And at 17 to 10, 31 minutes in, I mean, we will hit that sweet spot in the next 10 minutes. And I'm curious to see if we're going to do anything with this downed inhibitor from Falafel. No, it looks like they're just going to go off on the side of Zingy. Uh, caught out in a little bit of trouble. I thought he was going to get zingy but no, he's just going to chill out, go right back into the team, help out everybody else. They're going to reform. They're going to try to defend out this Baron. Pretty sure they have the damage at least to defend it off for a little bit. But they do not want to get poked down from the Shock Blast that are coming in from that Jace. So hopefully if Awful Gaming are going to try to reposition. They have the Oracle, so that's a big, big plus. And hopefully they can go clear out that jungle. Yeah, we've been seeing more and more importance as time goes on for those oracles. Ward Vision is definitely very strong mid to late game because of things like this. If you have a blind Baron go down and then all of a sudden you get surprised with a five-man gank and they're Baron infused, that's that's nothing that you really want to be going for here. But this is interesting. Project Challenger going for the Baron, but we have... No, I'm sorry. I was going to say, we have Project Challenger going for the Baron, but... Falafel going for the base, it's totally not that at all. Falafel gets the Baron, and it's Challenger just kind of defending their base, and a blind Baron it was. 
Yeah, it was just too much zone in control. Baby Zeus with that Oracle is really clearing out the lanes. They had no way, no vision to really keep up. And we need to see Prejudice Challenger now just give up on that chase. They're going to try to defend over on the inhibitor. So the middle inhibitor is going to be back up soon. So hopefully they can try to defend that one out. But with the Baron Infused team plus on top of that, no real damage on them as well. I'm pretty sure they're going to at least take it down this inhibitor. They possibly could go down and uh, rotate top to finish up that inhibitor turret as well. Yeah, real good timing because the inhibitor is now up. So, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of invade. Let's see who's actually going to come out the victory here. But so far, Falafel has been pretty on point with these team fights. The Baron only increases their chances of success. And the blue inhibitor is going to go down virtually uncontested at this point. So maybe we're just going to kind of spread out, look for those jungle objectives. We did get a ping onto the bottom lane. So maybe they're just going to be, you know, going a little bit greedy here. And yeah, they're just going to tank it out. And at this point in the game, I don't think Valkyrie or Zingy really mind tanking out the tower, but they're still going to juggle the aggro anyways. Yeah, I mean, just get, get the actual little burst and a little bit of damage and making sure that they can keep on this pressure, especially again, the inhibitor's down, you're going to have the lanes push up automatically just because they get more health. Um, the side lanes will get more health if the if one inhibitor is down. So very, very good to see the team of Falafel Gaming using their gold wisely because they're going to back and they're going to buy, but also using their map control wisely to really push onto the turrets that are really needed to win out this game. Alright, so we're gonna have to see what else they want to do with this Baron buff. They should have about half of its duration left, so we've got about more or less two minutes. Just waiting to confirm that if when the camera does pan in and around the place. And yep, about half. So we got two minutes or so to make something happen. We got that Quicksilver Sash on Waka 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 yet again. And as well as the BF Sword also with that Phantom Dancer. It's a very similar build to game number one. We did eventually finish up that IE somewhere in the 20 minutes, uh, 25 minute mark from Aces. But he also has that Zeal and a Last Whisper to boot. So, you know, the ADC is not really doing poor damage at this point, but 608 on Waka, I mean, he's been part of 14 out of 17 kills. I mean, it's very clear that he's way ahead at this point. Yeah, I mean, the damage up is just immense on him. He has the extra BS sword, he has the last whisper. I mean, yeah, there is a difference between IE and such, but I don't think that really matters, especially for Cloud X High just getting insta-give right at that moment. Not entirely too sure we needed to flash forward for it, Valkyrie. He also used his Ignite on top of things, but that feast coming out, oh my goodness. Uh, so, yeah, great. There's the Cupcake Brigade once again. We're just going to have to break through that wall. Baby Zeus is going to be taking the grenade, so to speak, in this regard, but we do have that <laughs> another cupcake going down. They're just trying to stall at this point. They want that Baron buff to go away. They want to try to make something happen, but they also, more importantly, have to stall for Cloud X High to come back. Unfortunately, he's still 20 seconds away. This next wave is going to be the wave that they're going to be pushing in on Falafel Gaming, and there's no more cupcakes to actually eat anymore. So, Falafel Gaming have that in store. They're all healthy, really ready to go. Oh my gosh, the life sustain plus the Warrior Perseverance doing way too much. And well, Falafel Gaming, they could have this one in the bag. Well, we're going to see as Zingy goes in, but he does get hit by the cocoon. Cloud is up, tower is down, inhibitor's about to melt. And you know, wow, it did not stand a chance whatsoever. That's going to be a crescendo on top of Jace, forces that out the flash from him. But as Zingy goes in, Jace going to come back into the fray. There's the slicing maelstrom. It's not going to proc any stuns. Okay, we'll hit, hit the stun on top of rule 18, but it will be enough for Waka Waka to go godlike. There's the... Cataclysm as well as EV card does drop to the double kill. There's been a lot of kills from the back lane, but the Zingy somehow still alive from the paranoia jump from that Nocturne. Oh my god, Zingy, you were so good at this. And when everything is done, four for one. Sure, they lost Shogath, but they're going to take the game. That's going to force us to a game number three in this NA promotional series. Congrats to them. Falafel Gaming taking the rubber match with this one. Now have to finish up the last one. Hopefully they can win out 1-1. One